welcome to tonight's program. Um, I appreciate each and every one of you that, that is joining us. Um, very excited about um, tonight's presentation from Natalie and the opportunity um, that you have to engage with her. And I thank you for participating. And a special thought, uh, shout out um, to members of our Little East Conference SAC Executive Committee. And, and for all of you, our SAC Executive Committee is made up of a representative from each campus. And it was really um, the Executive Committee that has drove um, this presentation to come about. So my thanks to each and every one of them. Um, and I appreciate all the work that they've done um, in helping us get this going. And I will get out of the way on this so we can get on to it. Um, but I do, for those of you that don't know, um, this is Daryl Kanicki, and Daryl is the Associate Commissioner in the Little East Conference. And he's the one that, that makes a lot of the behind the scenes things run for us. Um, all of the awards program that we have, um, the website and statistics and all of those sorts of things. And Daryl's gonna run the show tonight. So Daryl, it's all yours. Uh, thanks, Pam. Uh, yeah, as Pam mentioned, I'm the associate commissioner, uh, basically oversee whatever Pam tells me to on a daily basis, uh, especially these days. Um, you know, thanks for joining us. Very much appreciate everyone coming here. Um, just to, to let everyone know how this works, you know, our, our SAC wanted it to be a, a town hall kind of event. So Natalie's got a, a short presentation uh, to go over for you folks, and then we'll uh, utilize the uh, the chat functions, or uh, if you have a question that you want to ask yourself, um, you know, you can you know hit the reaction button, raise your hand, um, and then you know I'll try to make notes as we're going along as to who's got a question. And uh, if you're see you raising your hand, I'll you know you can unmute yourself at that time once I uh, once I call on you. Um, if you're not comfortable speaking yourself, obviously just go ahead, put it in the chat, whether it's for everyone's to view or just to, to me as a private message. And uh, we'll do the best we can to, to get to all those before we head out. Um, you know, and uh, one thing that we did have for our, uh, uh, just to do a quick intro on uh, Natalie, uh, Amanda Mitchell, uh, women's swimmer from uh, Eastern Connecticut, volunteered to uh, let you know a little bit of, about Natalie before uh, we get going here. Uh, so Amanda, if you're, uh, if you're ready, the floor is yours. Thank you. Um, there's a lot that can be said about Natalie Ledger. She's a great person. She's wonderful to work with. At Eastern, she works with both athletes and non-athletes on a wide variety of mental health concerns, including depression, anxiety, identity, and trauma. Ledger is in her third year of her doctoral program at Springfield College and has received her bachelor's in exercise science at the George Washington University in Washington, D.C. There, she completed as a D, competed as a D1 volleyball student athlete. She also completed her master's in exercise and performance psychology at Barry University in Miami, Florida. Leading up to her time at Eastern, Ledger has worked as a mental, health, mental performance coach for high school and collegiate athletes and business owners, as well as a psychology extern at the Brain, Indus, Brain Injury Rehabilitation Program at NYU Medical Center. Without further delay, I am happy to introduce Eastern's very own Natalie Ledger. Well, thank you. I appreciate that wonderful introduction and, and I'll just pop up uh, my presentation here so we can uh, get started. So I appreciate that lovely introduction and I appreciate uh, you, know, you all inviting me here to speak about a topic in athlete identity uh, that's really at the core of uh, an athlete's mental health. Um, and for me, you know, when Pam and Daryl invited me to come here and they mentioned that you all at SAC were really interested in this topic in particular, um, it made me really excited because I know even for me as when I was an athlete, uh, not too long ago, uh, but back, back in uh, a little while back, um, this was a topic that really people weren't that aware of. So uh, the fact that you all were able to come up with this as a topic that you wanted to hear more about demonstrated to me that you all are really curious and interested in learning more about yourselves and really care about improving your well-being overall, which, which is an incredible strength. Um, and my hope is that with this discussion is that this can ignite a sort of conversation for uh, the athletes in this room about athlete identity um, and how it impacts and, and relates to your mental health. And then also even for the administrators or even coaches on this call, I think it's really important 
uh, to speak about this topic so that potentially it can guide you in being able to foster an environment uh, to where your athletes can engage uh, in healthy human development and identity development. Uh, so without further ado, I think it'd be helpful for us to even just get oriented in knowing what athlete identity uh, really is at the end of the day. Um, and even more specifically, having an understanding of what identity is by itself. Um, and identity by itself is just how you perceive yourself and what you think about yourself. Um, and athlete identity is really about the extent to which an individual thinks and feels like an athlete. Pretty broad, right? Like this is really a lot of different factors that can contribute to you thinking and feeling like an athlete. Um, and something that's really important that I hope that everybody can keep in their minds as I go through this presentation and talk more about athlete identity is that this isn't something where it's good or bad or you should have it or you shouldn't. Athlete identity, and just like any other form of identity development, is something that exists on a spectrum and it's very fluid. Uh, it's something to where you can feel more attached to it some days and less attached to it other days. And it's something that can even fluctuate not only within a day, but even within hours and minutes. Um, and how much you think and feel like an athlete is something that's continuously fluid and can serve you in a multitude of ways. Uh, and some of the contributing factors to you thinking and feeling like an athlete, um, one is having teammates, um, being able to have a group of people who you compete with, practice with, learn from, even just able to hang out with and spend time with. Having that makes you think and feel more like an athlete. Um, another one is being able to demonstrate athleticism, uh, being able to demonstrate your physical strength, your physical prowess, being able to perform physically. Um, all of that makes you think and feel more like an athlete. Another one that I know is really big for most athletes right now, particularly with COVID and, and a lot of things being shut down is structure. Um, all of a sudden we're finding ourselves with 30 extra hours in the week. Well, at least you are, I am not, but many of you out there definitely are. Um, and having that structure of knowing, okay, I'm up at six, going to practice, have lifts, go eat, go to class, meet with coach, watch film, all of that structure, having that in your life makes you think and feel more like an athlete. And similarly, having clear objective goals and feedback about your performance on your goals, whether it's from coaches, teammates, or even yourself, uh, all of those things make you think and feel like an athlete. You have objectifiable measures of what sort of goals you wanna achieve. And it's clear every day you walk into the gym, field, pool, whatever it is. Um, and having that contributes to your athlete identity and another big one is having clear, definable measures of success and observable growth, right? It's wins and losses. It's I'm faster this week than I was last week, or I made more shots this week than I did last week. Um, all of those things are clear, observable measures of growth. And when you have that in your life, it makes you think and feel more like an athlete. And with that being said, throughout your life, What's really been salient for many of you is this athlete identity and as well as even a student identity, right? Because even in class, you have those clear measures of success. You have grades, you get feedback from a professor, you have structure and knowing I have class X days a week. Uh, all of that contributes to who you are. Um, and all of these identities, sometimes when it appears as though it's not being fulfilled then it means some sort of slight against your identity as a whole. And particularly now, I think the question that many people are trying to ask themselves when it comes to their athlete identity is, well, what happens when sport is gone then? What happens to my identity when sport goes away? Because if I've had all of these factors making me feel more like myself, what happens when sport is gone? And those factors appear to not be contributing to who I am. Well, first off, what I know many people go through, all of this passion, energy, and emotion here that you are able to put out into sport, it's still within you. It has gone absolutely nowhere. And in some people, this now manifests without sport in irritability, anger, impulsivity, 
or for some people, they turn and look for other outlets for them to put their passions into and really engage in this deep and deliberate pursuit of other areas where they can put this passion and energy and emotion. Then you still find yourself searching for these factors to fulfill who you are. You're still looking for ways to be able to demonstrate your athleticism or to find structure in your life or finding a sense of accomplishment and observable growth within your life. All of these things still exist when your connection to your athlete identity is still there and on the forefront of your mind. And the key is really, is that yes, while being an athlete and being a student has been really salient in your life and on the forefront of your mind for a long time, because many of you have been that for a long time, there is a lot more that makes up your identity. And on top of that, everything that you've learned through being an athlete and being a student can contribute to the other aspects of your identity and makes who you are. And when you're able to be able to find that perspective and knowing that all of those contributing factors that I mentioned before, they make you a better student. They make you a better sibling. They make you a better child. They make you a better friend. All of these things intersect with one another to make you who you are. So really to answer my earlier question of when sport is gone or when now you're learning in a completely different way with remote learning or hybrid learning, whatever it is, when all of that is gone and what happens to your identity, the ideal thing is for nothing to really happen. Because if you're able to integrate everything you've learned as an athlete and a student into who you are, sport as a context itself doesn't really matter. All of those skills and contributing factors that you learned as an athlete can be translated to all of your other identities and can be translated to life. But the key is to make that intentional psychological transition for yourself and how you do that is first understanding that you are more than an athlete. And in addition to that, being able to understand that all of your experiences have made you who you are today. And knowing this in your mind, it makes it much easier to understand how everything you've learned about having clear goals and getting feedback on your performance and defining success for yourself all of these things can help you throughout these other aspects of your life to where whether competition exists or not, it doesn't really matter. You can still feel fulfilled at the end of the day. And that's really what the goal of all of this is, is to feel as though you have this holistic identity. And one of the ways that we can even translate some of these contributing factors into life is one, doing some perspective taking. Because at the end of the day, even when it comes to having teammates and that making being something that contributes to your athlete identity, at its core, it's really just camaraderie and having colleagues and friends that you can interact with and grow with and get better with. And when it comes to wanting to demonstrate athleticism, at the root of that, it's wanting to be able to demonstrate your ability in some sort of way. And now what it might be is demonstrating your intelligence, demonstrating your kindness, your empathy, compassion for others. All of that is just demonstrating ability. When it comes to having structure, what was really comforting about having that structure was that it was a process that you could trust, whether it was in your coach or whether it was the structure of knowing that if I'm engaging in these behaviors, then I know I'm on the right path. But now you have to convince yourself and trust yourself that that process that you're engaging in is going to get you to where you want to go. When it comes to goals and feedback, now you have to develop new goals. It's not as objective as the ball went in the hoop or it didn't. Now it's about who you are and where you want to see yourself. And now you are in the driver's seat of being the person to provide yourself with feedback. And it's not a coach, it's not the sport, and it's not your teammates, it's you for the most part. And finally, now you need to redefine success. But all of these skills 
and these contributing factors to your athlete identity can be translated to the rest of your life and the rest of your identity to where even if sport is gone, you can still feel fulfilled and feel meaningful in your life. But this requires intention. It requires you making the choice every day to engage in that perspective taking because it is hard to not have sport right now. It's something that you miss. It is hard for the way that you've been learning throughout your life to be completely different now. But you have to make that intentional choice to take perspective and understand that what you've developed is not for nothing. And all that you've gained as an athlete is not for nothing. And for the administrators on the call at the individual institutions is to be able to foster an environment where you can demonstrate and model to the athletes that you work with that everything that they have learned as an athlete can be translated. But that has to be intentional. It can't just be, oh, well, you play sports, so everything that you've learned here is gonna work out for the future. There has to be systems that are intentionally designed to demonstrate to the athletes that yes, here's what you've learned and here's what can be translated to the rest of your life and doing that work together. And I know I'm on a call with a bunch of athletes and I work with a lot. Um, and something they always ask, as great as this, all of this information is and providing this context is, and people are saying, Natalie, this is a wonderful presentation so far, but I need tangible skills that I can take right out of this room um, that I can do immediately after this, because I know all of you athletes in here are very change motivated and very change oriented. Um, so I will give you some of those. First off, when it comes to the emotional piece and to speak to this a bit more about some of the emotions that, that athletes may be experiencing as they're transitioning, whether it's out of sport completely as seniors or uh, just as people who don't, aren't able to compete because of the current circumstances, um, is being aware that sometimes when we avoid our emotions, even just acknowledging them, it can potentially lead to additional distress. Um, and, I, and my hope is, is that through this presentation is that you can start noticing some of the emotions that you've been experiencing in part because of your attachment to your athlete identity and your ability to normalize that and accept those emotions will push you forward and get you to move forward. Um, another one is, is noticing your search for a sense of accomplishment. In sport, you wake up every day and you go to practice and you're able to experience some sense of accomplishment, even in the minor sense of whether it's, I got more reps in the gym this week, uh, I improved on my serve, whatever it is, you're able to experience that sense of accomplishment and now it's a little bit harder to find. Um, and this is something that I would call on all of you, continue searching. Um, it's going to be manifested in different ways than maybe you're used to, um, but that's okay. Um, and when it comes to thinking about moving forward with career, I know this is a tumultuous time for people to be thinking about their future and thinking about what happens after graduation. Uh, knowing that one of those contributing factors to your athlete identity is having clear feedback on your performance. Unfortunately, in the workforce, it's not always accessible. And you have to be the one on many instances to provide yourself with feedback on your performance. But when you really think about it at the end of the day, I know some of you sometimes with your coach, you're not really sure how they're thinking or feeling about your playing. So you do have that skill of being able to not have feedback accessible on your performance. It's just about, again, intentionally engaging in that perspective taking so you know you're capable of dealing with this in the future. Um, and another big one that really goes for anyone who's going through a transition in life is finding what's meaningful. And this can really come in the form of connecting more with your values um, and understanding what provides you with a sense of meaning. Um, and hopefully best case scenario is that you can find a profession that meets that need as well. Uh, and another big one that uh, that's really helpful and one being able to connect with a support system is great, but more specifically finding uh, mentorship. Um, and I think engaging in this is really something that's that's been seen through research through experiences, um, you know, that I've seen through athletic departments. 
of student, current student athletes being able to connect with either former teammates or alumni even, um, to have somebody who's even recently outside of uh, being a collegiate athlete and being able to see all of the ways in which what they learned as an athlete is now translating into the quote unquote real world. Um, this can be really helpful. And, and I think whether it's student athletes reaching out to their coaches and asking if they can get connected with former uh, you know, alumni um, or, or institutions and athletic departments attempting to set that up in the first place and set up some form of alumni uh, system and database can be really helpful uh, for student athletes when it comes to transitioning from sport into the rest of their lives. Um, and, and at the end of all of this, with all of this being said, at the bare minimum, all of this, what the, all of this is about is putting yourself in the best position to get better. You don't need to have it all figured out today, tomorrow, the next day. You don't need to find all this change and growth immediately or know everything that you need to know about life. It's about getting up every day and putting yourself in the best position to be better. That's what I find my role is as a therapist. And that's what I always hope from people I work with, particularly within the athlete population, to be thinking about what is going to put me in the best position to be better. So thank you. That is what I've got. And I am... Uh, I'm looking forward to any questions that you all may have um, related to this topic um, and any potential um, thoughts and, and comments here. Okay. Well, Natalie, thank you so much for that presentation. Awesome job as expected. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned before, folks, uh, if you have a question uh, that you would like to ask, uh, you can either use the, uh, the reaction button uh, on your screen to raise your hand and I'll call on you. Uh, or if you want to put something uh, directly uh, to me into the chat, you can certainly do that as well. Or for some of our SAC executive committee folks, I had the notes from the last meeting, I could just call on someone. a second here. Oh, I think I see somebody with their hand. Yeah. Okay, go ahead and unmute yourself. You should be able to do that. And see a little emoji thing go up. I've been bouncing mm -hmm. between the screens. Oh, there it is, Carson. <laughs> All right, Um, I just kind of have a question. I think a lot of me and my teammates are struggling with this right now. And we just have like so much free time on our hand without having like sports. And like, we're struggling with like, ways to be productive with that free time and we just feel like very overwhelmed with kind of just like empty time do you have any recommendations on maybe ways to be productive or like kind of fill that <laughs> yeah i think that's a great question and it's definitely something that i've been hearing a lot um and 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 a lot of almost distress is coming out from that free time right like all of a sudden you found an extra 20 30 hours in your week uh that you never had before um, and my always first question to that is, in return, is what makes it so hard to be bored? Why is it so challenging to be bored? Because I think there's actually a lot of recovery that can possibly happen in being bored. And this constant need to feel productive is actually part of your athlete identity. And that fuel of, if I'm not constantly doing something, if I'm not in the gym, then somebody else is. Well, literally, this is the first time where if you're not in the gym, most likely the other person's not in the gym either. And that frequent sense of need of like, I need to constantly be productive or then I'm failing, it's not necessarily reality. Um, and it's also not helpful to you. I think this is really a beautiful time for people to be able to one, notice that recovery is actually training in a sense. Uh, Cause one, there's a lot of mental training work that can get done. Um, and there's also, a lot of learning about yourself that can get done. Um, and I would you know, suggest and, and kind of encourage you as well as other people in this room to start noticing, like, why is it that I feel in such irritability or frustration when I'm just like alone hanging out with myself or with other people? 
Like, why, why is this so distressing for me to not have something to do right now? Um, and just start noticing when, when you start experiencing that. Because uh, I think the most powerful thing that can be done is to just be able to accept that um, and get to a place where you can even enjoy it. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Natalie, we had a, we have one question here in the chat, uh, piggybacking off what Carson was just asking about, and then I'm going to go to Logan Terry. Uh, so picking off, off Carson's uh, question, how can we keep up motivation during times like this? Yeah, um, that's, that's definitely a big one. Um, and, and typically when, you know, and I don't know if this is this person's exact experience, but typically when people experience this lack of motivation, um, it's usually due to either potentially some sort of concern about the future um, or some sort of concern about what they're currently experiencing um, that causes them to feel as though they don't want to go off and go do something. Um, because in actuality, as human beings, we are pretty motivated to get things done. Um, but there's usually something that's telling us, oh, no, we don't want to go try this or take that risk or see what could potentially happen if I make a certain decision. Um, and, and I think when it comes to feeling unmotivated, uh, it's probably a really odd experience for many of you in this room, uh, because as an athlete, you are somebody who's typically very go-getting, very change-oriented, like, just tell me what to do and I'll go do it. Um, and, and I think starting to really notice within yourself, like, okay, where maybe this lack of motivation is coming from? Um, is it something to where I'm concerned about my future? Is it something to where I'm concerned about a particular experience I'm having? Um, and potentially leaning into that uh, can get you out of that stuck place of feeling unmotivated. And also normalizing the fact that like at this point in the year, most college students feel quite unmotivated, which is very normal. <laughs> I know I used to around this time of year. <laughs> I mean, this uh, week kind of 12, 11 ish time, like when it feels like it should just be the last week of the semester, this is very normal. Yeah. Uh, uh, Logan, uh, Terry, you're next. Go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah. So this doesn't relate to that. Um, after, once you're out of school and stuff, do you find that a lot of people find helpful to stay involved in their sport somehow? Yeah, I mean, for people where that's meaningful, considered like meaningful uh, work to them, um, they find joy in doing that, absolutely. Um, you know, there are some individuals where they feel that need to stay connected, um, maybe for some like maladaptive reasons, you know, feeling like, oh, like I still have something to give or, you know, re being regretful about something they didn't accomplish in the past. Um, but for some people, it is something to where there's this inclination to give back because potentially for you, sport gave you a lot in your life um, and you want to be able to send that back to the next generation. And I think that's, you know, a really great thing to do, and particularly if you find it meaningful in your life. All right. Uh, we had one of our uh, administrators uh, put a question in, but that, uh, th I could see this having come from an athlete as well, just from, you know, some of the few conversations I have had with folks. Uh, breaks are going to be extra long this year. Do you have any advice for coaches and players to engage one another during the break? What things can we do to help each other improve both mentally and physically? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, I think one of the big things that, uh, that I found to be pretty successful, particularly with teams uh, nowadays is because everybody just has all these Zoom meetings scheduled or WebEx meeting, team meetings, whatever it is, it feels as though if I'm going to hang out with my friends, I have to like schedule it, right? Like it doesn't feel as spontaneous as it used to feel where you could just walk over to their dorm room or just hang out in the hall, whatever it was. Um, I think something that I've found pretty helpful with when working with teams is on a rotating basis, having a member just host like a Wednesday night uh, Zoom call. Um, and people can hop in, you know, whether it's weekly, bi-weekly, whatever it is, and people can choose to hop in, they can choose not to. Um, but the power of knowing that somebody is there to support you at any, at some instance during the week in itself can be really powerful. Um, and not feeling like, oh, like I gotta, you know, schedule this meeting with somebody or, 
you know, I got to go out of my way to intentionally reach out to someone so that they can check in on me or whatever it is. Um, but being able to, particularly with teams, just say, hey, like, you know, captains are going to rotate. Uh, somebody's just going to host it one week, you know, on Wednesday nights, let's say. And, you know, they'll, they'll be somebody here to chat for an hour, two hours, whatever it is. And there's no pressure on people needing to show up or needing to attend or whatever, but it's also a good way for you all to see each other's faces and be able to check in because, you know, many of us know over text, you don't really get the necessarily emotion behind what's being said. Um, and to be able to get on a call and see each other's face and really be able to see, all right, like they're still they're looking all right, feeling okay, um, can be really powerful. Uh, and just reaching out to people to know that you're there is more powerful than setting up a whole get together sort of thing. Okay. Okay, those are the questions I've seen in the chat so far. Does anyone else has something, you know, feel free to put it in there or I'm trying to go back and forth on the screen here. If you got a question, feel free to ask. Yeah, I, I have a question for you, um, Natalie. For those that are leaders on their teams and you talk about, you know, finding the best of yourself and working toward being the best of yourself, what tips do you have for the leaders here, uh, most especially for those younger players that they see promise in? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think when I think about anybody in a leadership role, uh, the thing that comes to my mind is, is being able to model uh, adaptive and, and healthy behaviors um, to the people who are looking up to you. Uh, so what that could look like here is checking in with your teammates or you know first year, second year, whoever it is, and ask them about their life. Ask them about things outside of sport. Um, ask them about uh, you know how they're managing even outside of school. Um, because we wanna create an environment where we can foster this well-rounded and holistic identity um, and one of the ways to do that is to be able to expand what you know about yourself um, and to see other people in leadership positions who are talking about and interested in and curious about uh, other elements of their identity and being able to expand that. Uh, that's gonna lead for those first and second years and whoever else is there uh, to be able to see like, oh, this is what it means to be a, a strong athlete, right? Like this is what it means to be able to be well-rounded and to be resilient at the end of the day. Okay, uh, saw a couple of hands go up quick. Uh, first, we're gonna go to uh, Hannah Bradshaw. All right, um, first of all, thank you for the presentation. Um, can you hear me all right? Yeah, I gotcha. Okay, sorry, I wasn't sure. Um, uh, thank you for the presentation, but uh, I was just curious, you had talked a lot about um, just like acknowledging certain things when they come up, like be it emotions or like mindset things that um, you may be dealing with. Um, but I know like for some people it might be difficult to get to the source, like especially if it's like a combination of different things. So do you have any strategies on how um, athletes in particular, anyone really could just um, kind of narrow it down to really, because it's hard to like improve on something if you don't know what the problem is, you know? So I'm just wondering if there's any strategies that you have on how to get to the source. Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And I think uh, when it comes to particularly with emotions, uh, emotions are very complex. Um, and it's something to where you can be experiencing a whole host of emotions all at the same time. And they could be completely conflicting, opposing one another, uh, seem irrational, whatever it is. Um, and they can just come and go through your mind. Um, and most of the time, they don't mean much. And that act of us constantly trying to figure out, oh my God, where is this coming from? What does this mean? Why is it that I feel this way? It's not very helpful. Um, and in reality, what it can end up leading towards is just a lot of ruminating and a lot of uh, like distress about, oh my God, what does this mean that I'm experiencing all of this? Uh, because in reality, like we have thousands of emotions that are flooding through our body throughout a day. Um, if we were trying to figure out the cause of all of them, like we would get nothing done. 
Um, so I think it's slightly different when it comes to like thoughts that you're experiencing or experiences that you've had. Uh, but with emotions, the most powerful thing you can do is really relinquish that control of needing to know why you're feeling that way. Um, and if you think about it in some way, like an analogy of like, if you have sand in your hand and if you close your fist really tight, like you're trying to gain control of it, much of that sand is gonna fall out. But instead, if you kind of just let go a little bit and just let it sit in your hand, you hold on to more of it. And that's gonna allow, that relinquishing of control actually makes you feel like you're in a lot more in control of your life. Uh, but particularly with emotions, normalizing them number one like understanding that what you're experiencing is very normal uh validating it for yourself being able to just notice it and accept it and eventually it will pass uh, but the more that we try to really like hold on to it tight and try to seek where it's coming from what it means that's a rabbit hole that has no end for the most part thank awesome you. thank you yeah yeah. Uh, next uh, person with a hand up was Amanda Mitchell. So one thing that I personally has, it's like a big part of my identity is that um, most of my friends have been made through sport and coming into the end of my senior year, getting closer and closer to graduating and no longer being a, as part of a sports team. Um, I'm a little nervous of how that's going to reflect on my identity and how I'm going to make new friends. And even in just like the context of now, it's sometimes like sad to think about um, talking to the freshman athletes or talking to the new athletes and um, learning about their lives and getting to know them only to know that I'll be leaving in the next year. So it, it's just kind of like, how should like athletes who might be in my position kind of take that into consideration when they're like thinking about their identity and so like social aspects of athletics. Yeah, thank you for that question. Um, yeah, it is very challenging, right? Because like you said, it is something to where you develop these friendships through sport uh, and you feel really connected to that. Um, and the thing that I think about when you ask that question is well, throughout life, we're constantly changing and evolving. And that's the same thing when it comes to our identity and, and the relationships that we maintain through our lives. Um, and it's no slight on the relationships that you have that potentially they can drift apart. Uh, it's a very natural part of life. Um, and yes, it is sad. Yeah The more that we try to repel that or try to change that, it's going to make the experience all the more distressing. Um, and it's going to make it harder for you to enjoy the time that you do have with these people. Because in fact, we have no idea, potentially these are your lifelong friends. We have no clue. Um, but the more and more that you try to seek control of like, oh, this has got to stay like this all the time, uh, the less authentic you can be with them, uh, the more challenging it is to be present. And all the things that made you friends in the first place and the things that you contributed to that friendship, uh, they start to weaken uh, because you're so consumed with trying to hold on to where it is in that moment. Uh, you can't, can't hold on to it. Uh, and, the, and the faster you're able to come to that point of relinquishing that need for control, the more able th things are able to just evolve in a really natural way. And then you can eventually come to peace with wherever it goes. Okay. Uh, next question we have is uh, from uh, Haley Beaupre. I hope I said that last name right. Yeah, you got it. So I'm actually an alumni. Um, recently, I just graduated back. Graduated back in May. Um, I am actually in Scotland right now in grad school, and it's quarter of one in the morning, but we're here. <laughs> um, Good sport. So. <laughs> Um, so I have been briefly talking to Kara about this and Matt as well. Um, it's been a while since I checked in, but I am in grad school in a foreign country all by myself during a pandemic. Um, I don't have the comfort of my team or my coaches or uh, my friends or even my family. Um, and I've been struggling. Uh, I'm also doing online school, but um, sometimes I get to go on my 
campus that looks like Hogwarts, but um, it's, I've been having a really hard time and I don't really have anyone to talk to about it because I'm the only one in my position. Um, it's really hard for me to get motivated even with my studies, um, just from the comfort of my little room. Um, it's, it's difficult. Um, I don't have field hockey to go let off steam on the field. I don't have my friends that I've known for years to hang out with. I can't go complain to my coach um, or even my mom. So I'm like very alone and I'm trying to figure out who I am without field hockey and also without my friends and my family and my team and yeah. So, and also trying to find my identity in a new land doing transferring from undergrad to grad school and yeah. Yeah, and I appreciate you sharing that. Like, it, it's absolutely a challenge. And, and I can hear even in how you're describing it, you're attempting to take that perspective, right? Of yeah. like, this is a pandemic, I'm in another country by myself, mm -hmm. um, and I'm in a new learning format. And the transition out of sport is hard enough without all of that, Yeah. <laughs> right? Um, yeah. And I think, you know, like we were mentioning, like being able to like acknowledge that and really lean into that perspective intentionally mm -hmm and knowing that it's okay yeah like yeah it's gonna suck <laughs> like it, that makes a lot of sense yeah because it's not only like losing the sport I've played since I was a kid but I'm, I also left Keen. I also left my hometown I left the country um all at the same time so it's been I'm adjusting to figure trying to figure out who I am and staying up to my own expectations all at the same time and I'm just having a hard time I think balancing whether it's school, like just being, again, being alone, because that's really the main just because I'm alone and unmotivated. Um, I'm not on the field 40 hours a week anymore. So, so yeah. it's not like I have that either. I don't have my coach yelling at me to go work out either. So it's, it's very different. And I, and I'm, I don't think I recognize enough that I am having a harder time than I let on adjusting. Yeah. And, and I think that's, you know, like you mentioned, that's, that's in some way a major part of it. Um, and being able to acknowledge like the extent to which what you're experiencing for what it is. Um, and also being able to know, like, look, all of these experiences that you mentioned that, that you got out of sport, uh, it's not necessarily there. And now you have to rely on yourself to find those things, but it can be translated. Um, these are all things that are made you who you are today. Um, and it's not about being able to figure out all the answers in the immediate sense. Again, it's about how can I get myself to a place to where I can eventually be better. Uh, that's really the key here. And, and the, in part because of our athlete identities, there's this pressure of being able to figure it out, right? Like you're always on a clock. It's like seasons here. We're practicing. There's a game this weekend. I need to have figured this skill out immediately. In life, with this sort of stuff, particularly with, you know, distressing emotions, it's a process. It's a journey. Um, and, but that was really the same thing in sport. We just weren't really aware of that. But it was a journey then, too, when you were developing skills as well as an athlete. Now it just looks a little different. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate that. I'm definitely, yeah. it's definitely a work in progress for sure. And I'm, most days I just take it day by day and just try to get through without falling into a hole, I guess. That's <laughs> what you can do. It. That's yeah. what you have, right? Just yeah. like with sport. If you have 20%, you have 20%. All right, let's go. Thank I want you your 20%. Much. Thank you. You got it. Take care of yourself. Thanks. Okay. Uh, we do have uh, one question in the chat here as well uh, from uh, Tyler Young. With the uncertainty of having a competition season, what advice would you give for winter athletes to stay encouraged when we are working so hard in practices with no payoffs or competition? Many athletes are struggling with this right now, and he, and he is not wrong. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I particularly feel for those of you who kind of got the rug pulled out of you, I mean, really two times when it came to last year where some people's uh, – you know, final playoff seasons and conference championships got cut off right at the end there. Um, and then now with this all hanging in the balance, um, you know, a, a lot of it is very similar to, to what you go through in life when it comes to not knowing what the future holds. Uh, that's always been the case throughout your life if you don't know what the future holds. Um, now this is something where obviously it's really important to you and it's meaningful for you to be able to compete. 
Uh, but just like with anything else in your life that's really significant to you, when you don't know what the future holds, like, yeah, that could be uncomfortable. And feeling like, ah, oh, I don't know if this is worth it or not. I mean, same thing with school, right? Same thing with picking a career, same thing with maintaining a relationship, all of these things, you don't know what the outcome is. But it's about trusting the process, which requires trusting yourself. And that's the hard thing, because before, as an athlete, you got to put your trust in other places. You got to trust that, okay, all right, coach knows what's best to do. Like, the administrators and department kind of have a framework and know how to support me in some sort of way, whatever it is. Now there's a lot more onus on you to trust the process you're laying for yourself. Um, and regardless of whatever the situation is, you never know what the outcome's going to look like. All you can know is, is that what you're doing today is the best decision you can make for yourself today. All right. Thank you so much. Um, well, we still have a little bit of, uh, of time here. We you know, figured this would maybe go 45 minutes to an hour or so. Uh, so if anyone else has a question, you, know, you can you know, dump it in the chat or raise your hand quick. Did get a quick thank you from Tyler right there, Natalie, just so you know. Thank you. And I'll just add one thing too, particularly since there are administrators on the call and, and I'm always very much a, a proponent of a lot of this work involves systems. Like it's not just the individual who has to work on these things. Um, and I think when we think about athlete identity and, and a lot of the things that we've talked about here, as these athletes, they're gonna leave this call and they're gonna say, wow, Natalie, thank you very much. This was wonderful information. I'm gonna to try to take this on and move forward. And they're gonna be instances where they're struggling through it. And if they're coming to you or looking towards what your athletic department looks like, is your athletic department demonstrating that the process of them working through their athlete identity, that that's a good process for them to go through and that they should be validated in going through that process? And that's really important for you all to be engaging in is, am I supporting my athlete who's, okay, we're in the depths of season in playoffs and they're thinking about uh, you know, grad school applications. Support that, be there for that, allow them to go do that. Um, that they're thinking about in the middle of a you know, practice or whatever it is about their future. Allow them to do that, support that. Um, because they're going to have difficulties through it. It's just, this is what life is. It's, go, it's challenging to make change. But the more you can foster an environment from coaches, systems, admin, whatever it is, to where we are a department who fosters positive and healthy human identity development and just human development overall, then it's going to validate for all of the athletes here and the athletes in your department that they can trust themselves and they can trust this process they're going through. But they need you for that. They're great and they're really strong and they're resilient and they'll eventually figure it out. But it accelerates a process and makes it a hell of a lot easier on them if they can see the people in leadership are also fostering that environment for them to do this as well. And uh, absolutely. Um, well, unless anyone's got a, a last minute question here, I can turn it back over to, uh, you know, to Pam real quick, to see if, uh, see if she's got anything for us before we wrap things up. No, first, Natalie, thanks so much. I mean, that's some great information and from, uh, from all the student athletes, some great questions and really appreciate the engagement um, really appreciate um, the participation from everyone tonight. And, and please know, you know, while Daryl and I are not on a campus, um, you know, we, we feel a lot of this, we go through a lot of the same um, feelings that you're going through without the competition. I mean, the fun part for Daryl and me is to be able to watch competitions on web streams, to be at championships, to see the successes that you have, um, on the field, on the court. Um, and my, my thanks to Natalie for, you know, especially during these times, reminding us, you know, that it's not all about that, but it's a process and it's what we take um, from the process that, that makes us who we are. And as somebody that has been out of this for, in, is 
was an athlete, a college athlete decades ago, I can tell you, I still view myself as an athlete. And because of the reason that what I, you know, so much of who I am was what was developed on the fields and on the courts and that I translated into, into the rest of my life. So Natalie, thanks so much for your, for your um, presentation. Thanks to all the student athletes. My, again, a shout out to our SAC executive um, mm -hmm. committee. And, and please know to all of you, you know, how proud I am of you of all your efforts, um, what you're doing, what you mean as leaders on your campus. Um, you're making a difference um, even in these times. And, you know, keep at it um, and, 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 and stay the course with everything. Um, we will see people back on the courts and on the fields and doing the things you love to do. In the meantime, you know, continue to develop yourself and help your teammates develop themselves. Thank you, I appreciate it. And, and for, you know, the students on this call, I mean, pretty much every single university or college counseling services are available if you need them at Eastern. We definitely have them, I'm there too. Um, and also uh, for people who have even graduated, um, organization applied uh, association for sports psychology they have sports psychology consultants. You can go on their websites, find a consultant. They even have ones out in Europe as well. Um, they're all international, um, all over the place, and they can help you, uh, particularly when it comes to these sport issues as well. Um, so if you feel like you're really struggling, you want to sort through these things, um, I highly recommend seeking out those resources, particularly while you're in school. Yeah, well, Natalie, thank you again so much for, for taking the time to be with us tonight, getting, you know, a bunch of people saying thank you in the in the chat right now. This was exactly what they were looking for. I, I certainly second that, uh, you know, fantastic job tonight. Uh, yeah, and, and just to reiterate what Pam's, you know, Pam and Natalie have said, like, you know, folks, whether it's your your coach or, or someone else in, in the athletics office, like I was an SID for 15 years on a campus, you know, there were occasions certainly where athletes would, you know, come with me for stuff to, to be that kind of shoulder to lean on, person to vent to, person to ask some advice of. And, you know, everyone in the athletic department is there to help point you in the right direction and get you any kind of help you need, no matter what that is, no matter when it is. So feel free to, to, to reach out to any of those folks. You know, we're all here to help. Um, and with and with that, you know, you know, thank you everyone again for, for taking the time tonight and, uh, you know, have a, you know, you know, great rest of the, the semester what left, is left of it. Good luck on finals and uh, hope you're able to enjoy the holidays. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.